I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. It started shortly before 2 yesterday afternoon when a woman driving a pickup truck with an attached trailer smashed into a van and hit a pedestrian at Route 17K and Route 300 in the town of Newburgh. She didn't stop and the chase began into the city of Newburgh. And when it ended 23 minutes later at Liberty Street and Gibney Avenue, the truck had damaged uh, three city of Newburgh police cars, the town of Newburgh police car, a minivan, and another vehicle. 26-year-old Tiffany Foote was taken into custody and charged with felony reckless endangerment, criminal mischief, and aggravated unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle. Police say Foote had 10 suspensions on her driver's license and did not appear to be impaired by drugs or alcohol. Bail for Foote has been set at $50,000. Police say it could have been worse, so with school buses in the vicinity of the chase route. Additional charges have been filed against a Brooklyn man involving the use of forged driver's license and stolen credit card information. 22-year-old Stefan Griffin was initially charged with grand larceny, criminal impersonation, and criminal possession of a forged instrument. After police say he tried to pick up an Apple MacBook Pro laptop computer with the fraudulent information at the Best Buy in the town of Wallkill last Wednesday. Now police say their investigation determined that earlier that day, Griffin used the same method to buy a laptop computer online and had it picked up at the Best Buy in Kingston. The new charges include identity theft, plus additional counts of grand larceny, criminal impersonation, and criminal possession of a forged instrument. Supporters of the organization's Alliance for Quality Education and Citizen Action of New York were in Kingston today to launch a social media campaign called We Can't Wait. And they're demanding that the state comply with the Campaign for Fiscal Equity court-ordered school funding. They say data shows uh, the state owes schools across the state $5.9 billion in classroom operating aid, including more than $316 million owed to school districts in the Mid-Hudson region. Alliance officials want the state to provide a $1.9 billion down payment in the 2015 state budget for school aid. They say their campaign is the result of years of classroom cuts due to inadequate state budgets. The controversial MTA payroll tax is not going away. The proposed $32 billion five-year capital improvement program outlined by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority includes money uh, from the payroll tax that was imposed years ago in Orange and Dutchess counties. Local leaders continue to say the tax places an unfair burden on Hudson Valley businesses and residents. Past legislative efforts to get it repealed have failed. The MTA capital program includes planned upgrades to the Metro North Port Jervis rail line. Senator Charles Schumer was in Newburgh today pushing a bill that he says would, if passed, better protect firefighters from exposure to cancer-causing flame-retardant chemicals that are found in furniture and children's products and toys when those chemicals are released during a fire. The legislation would ban the 10 most toxic flame retardants from upholstered furniture, as well as items like crib mattresses, changing table pads, and pajamas. Uh, Schumer's bill would also require the Consumer Product Safety Commission to study all other flame retardants to identify other potential cancer risks. Meantime, the State Firemen's Association applauded Governor Cuomo for signing the Volunteer Firefighter EMT Excused Leave Bill into law. It protects the jobs of volunteer firefighters and EMS personnel, ensuring they won't lose their jobs if they were late or missed work because they responded to declared emergencies. Senator Schumer also paid a visit to the Kingston Police Department, where he called on the Federal Drug Enforcement Agency to add new synthetic drug chemical combinations to its list of banned control substances. Schumer says synthetic marijuana and other hazardous drug-like products are still being sold online and on store shelves. He says the drugs can lead to seizures and hallucinations, as well as dangerous and erratic behavior. He's a former Goshen mayor and current executive director of the Hudson Valley Builders Association. And for the past eight years, one of the 400,000 or so people in the U.S. living with multiple sclerosis, MS. And these days, you are apt to see Scott Wool on his bicycle, training for a 100-mile ride next month that will raise money for the fight against the chronic neurological disorder. I decided to get involved with some of the MS uh, Society's fundraising efforts. 
Uh, started out with, with local walks, regional walks, and expanded into the bike rides, which have just actually become quite a passion for me now. Um, any number of routes this year actually I'll be doing for the first time 100 miles, so very excited. It, it's, it's a relatively, uh, I would say, silent or even invisible disease. A lot of folks don't realize what people with MS go through. Uh, it gets confused with a lot of other diseases, but the reality is there's well over 2 million people worldwide who actually suffer from MS. Uh, typically people in, in the prime of their lives, between 20 and 50 years old, uh, again, who any number of symptoms. It's a neurological disease. You can have physical uh, challenges, mental challenges that, that you really can't see most of the time. Um, so it's really anybody and everybody, and most folks are actually wildly surprised to find out uh, a friend or neighbor may actually be suffering with or, or working through multiple sclerosis. The ride is Sunday, October 5th. It starts in Manhattan and goes into New Jersey, Rockland County, and back into New York City. And Scott Wohl and other MS participants will receive special, special recognition during the ride with their identifiable I Ride With MS jerseys. And state police say there were suspicions that a home in the town of Mamacating was being used as a marijuana grow operation. A search warrant was obtained, and inside the residence, uh, police found about 700 marijuana plants and about 25 ounces of processed pot. The discovery led to the arrest of 56-year-old Bang Noyan of Washingtonville. He's been charged with felony marijuana possession and unlawfully growing cannabis. Noyan was uh, being held without bail in Sullivan County Jail pending an appearance today in town of Mamacating Court. <laughs> Wet weather is headed our way. There is rain in the forecast tomorrow, and it'll be chilly as well on Thursday, with temperatures topping out around 65 degrees. Better weather Friday. It'll be mostly sunny and warmer Friday, with the highs reaching the upper 70s. We'll get an edge on the day by starting it with the Times-Herald record, and keep clicking here throughout the day to stay on top of breaking news at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter. <laughs> Thank you.